Good evening. Good to see everybody. Glad that you're here. Those of you joining us online, we welcome you as well. And it is extremely good for us to be back home. We, uh, we enjoyed our vacation, but uh, there's no place like home. So it's uh, good to get back. And uh, sometime if you really uh, want to just cry, I'll tell you all about my vacation. <laughs> <laughs> but... Uh, but it, it, it was still, it was still good. It's all good. It just, uh, it, it won't quite as good, but it was still, it was all good. And, uh, and I am, uh, I'm blessed beyond imagination. I will tell you that, uh, uh, being sick when you're on vacation is not the best time, That's right. but at the same time, it kept me from being here and getting any of y'all sick. And it kept me from being sick at work, which I say so I, I won't do anything anyway. So, uh, so, uh, so I, I was I was sick for about one day, and uh, and that was it. And if, if if somebody hadn't told me they invented COVID, I would have thought I had a cold. So uh, so I, I got along real good with it. Uh, it's not my fault somebody gave it to me. So, uh, but anyway, you know how that goes. Yeah, I do, but I still like him, so it's all right. So it's, uh, think I do anyway so but yeah it's not it's not a problem at all but there you go yeah um way of announcements remind you Sunday Sunday school worship service at their regular times this Sunday men's breakfast is the community men's breakfast so men from several different churches will be joining us for that we'll be planning to eat about quarter to eight eight o'clock something like that so uh, if you if you can help cook uh, we'll be cooking more so we'll need more cooks what time are you going to start cooking? Six o'clock? Seven? Six o'clock? Something like that. So if you can help cook. If nobody uh, shows up, we'll probably eat about 9 30. There you go. <laughs> well, that, that'll work too. We won't eat till it's done. So when, that, when they start filtering in, they'll probably help. So <laughs> they'll get a little more. Some help. Uh, we've got a, I'm expecting, I'm going to cook for about 75 people. Right. We usually, usually have a good crowd for that. So, yeah, uh, and I have invited some other folks. Folks from Fine Level won't usually participate. Oh, okay. And uh, so I'll invite some folks from his church and all who will come. All right, and I'll uh, I'll try to remember to put it on Facebook and get get a word out about that, and uh, so everybody think about that. Um, other announcements? Anything else? I put it on uh, Bethany's okay. Ah, so the uh, they're they're they're, all, they're always here full time to eat anyway, so don't worry about it. They'll be fine. Uh, somebody's got to be the last one through the line anyway, so. Daniel's been out sick, but I'm hoping he'll be squared away by then. Right. Yeah, All right. Well, we'll have some other things coming up in the days that are ahead, but for right now, that's it. I wonder before we uh, share in prayer, if there are those you might want to mention for us to remember. My aunt, Irene Brown. Yep. Alan's aunt passed away from remember that family. Uh, Mr. Bartholomew used to be the principal over at, at uh, Princeton uh, and say he's not, not doing well. And uh, I, uh, one of the men that worked with us, William's uh, brother-in-law, and I don't know his his name. His uh, I've got it written down somewhere, but he's uh, he goes by Neg. He uh, he lives up here at Bagley, and uh, he has he has cancer. And uh, so let's let's pray for him. They uh, diagnosed him. A week or so back, he was actually out of town when they found it, and uh, so let's uh, let's pray for him. Though. Um, My mother still has COVID. She's getting old. She was the third or fourth family member. She gave it to and uh, eight friends, uh, so forth, so forth, and so forth. Yeah. Uh, it uh, I, I've, I, I've I've been checking more about it and it had one of the doctors i'm not sure his name that's on the, on the news in the morning this morning and he was saying that saying that <clears throat> we've reached a point that it uh, the, what's out there now is probably the most contagious of any we've had it's the easiest to catch but also is by far the least in terms of danger and he said with the number of people that are vaccinated plus the number of people that have natural immunity plus all of that that's taking place uh, herd immunity and all those things he said it's just time to learn to live with it so that's what we're gonna have to do and so 
you know, it's still, it's people, if you know you got it, be careful around somebody that's a high risk person, people that are, are uh, already have pre existing. Uh, you know, you want to be very careful around uh, older people. Those of us that are really young aren't as concerned about it, but uh, the uh, <laughs> old people, you have to watch out for them. Yeah, no, but, but especially people that have weak, weak immune systems, anybody that's been going through cancer treatments or anything like that, uh, diabetics, uh, in, any high risk group. You want to, but that's always true with, with any type of sickness. So uh, let's just be, uh, let's be extra careful. Take care of ourselves and take care of others. Anybody else? Don't want to miss anybody. We've got all our, all our folks that have been on our prayer list for a good while, and we keep lifting each one of them up. So. Rick, will you lead us? Let's pray. I kindly grace Have another day of life, a day of life to enjoy, a day in life to serve our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, a day that uh, we can gather together to, on a special day, uh, Wednesday, to study your word. And Father, we do ask you to bless now the study of your word tonight. Give us ears to hear that which we do hear and to truly hear it. Not to be hearers only, but to be doers of your word, according to what you tell us through your word. Bless our pastor as he leads us and facilitates the study of your word as he studies. And the Holy Spirit is revealed to him that which he should speak to us. Father, let him speak with clarity and power from above. Father, as we come to the portion of the Tonight's meeting together and we intercede on behalf of others. Father, we thank you for this opportunity. I don't believe we're any more like Christ than when we're interceding on behalf of others as he intercedes for us, ever sitting at the right hand of the Father. Father, we do lift up every name that's been mentioned here tonight, whatever their need, be it physical, spiritual, whatever. Lord, we just ask that according to your will and purpose for their lives, that you would do it. That, Lord, where healing is due, healing would happen. Whatever happens, Lord, we know it's according to your will and purpose for their lives. For you are in control of all things, even the sickness that comes upon us, according to the scripture. But, Lord, we just ask you, in Jesus' name, Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> have your Bibles and invite you to turn to the 25th Psalm. You can almost any time under any circumstances turn to the book of Psalms and open it and begin to read and it will speak to you. Um, the uh, as the Psalms, of course, uh, we, we remember is, uh, was the songbook of the Jews. Uh, and most of the, uh, most of the Psalms are written somewhat as poems. Uh, they were intentionally written that way so that the people could learn them. And, uh, so I, I remember through the, through the years, you know, uh, when we were in school, you know, used to in school, we learned to uh, we learned a scripture passage each year for for our assembly program. Any of y'all remember doing that assembly programs? And and we uh, we learned class, and so uh, we uh, we learned the twenty fourth psalm and the twenty third. You know, I had pretty much already learned, and then I was just very thankful that the teacher didn't say we were going to do the hundred nineteenth psalm uh, <laughs> because <laughs> that would have been the assembly program period if we had done it. But. Uh, you know, last week though, while we were, we were on vacation, I actually uh, I spent a, a good bit of time reading and studying that psalm. It's amazing that that the, the psalm, of course, it, it actually is is an acrostic of of the letters of the alphabet, and it was done the way it was so that they could learn it. And 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 the children in school 
would have memorized that. And and it the, each uh, each uh, and if if I understand correctly, uh, my Hebrew is not real good, but uh, if I understand correctly, in the original Hebrew, each section is named after the letter of the alphabet, and each verse begins with that letter in the original Hebrew. So it, it actually that enabled them to try to remember it easier. But the, the truth of it, and, and amazing, I thought about uh, I thought about doing it, and we may, in fact, uh, we may take a few weeks. Uh, some knots and study that, but I'm not sure about it. But e each passage of it is a reminder of God's word, the importance of God's word, God's word in our lives, God's word to answer to the needs that we have, and just over and over and over again remind. But but the 25th Psalm, which you want to look at tonight, uh, is, is a psalm that is uh, it it's a uh, it's a psalm of David. It is it's written somewhat as a as a reminder to him to how. Uh, to face life uh, when, when when everything's not going perfect, and uh, you know if we we're reminded uh, pretty regularly that life's not perfect, things don't work out exactly like we want them to. Uh, sometimes we have a tendency, all of us, the best of us, uh, we have a tendency to notice the things in life that aren't going well better than we do the things that are going well, uh, and and if we're not careful. Uh, we can we can complain because of it, uh, but he reminds us here that no matter what's happening in our life, uh, that that uh, God is there. And there's there's three basic sections that this psalm's divided into. If you begin beginning in verse one, unto Thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. O my God, I trust in Thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not mine enemies triumph over me. Yea, let none that wait on thee be ashamed. Let them be ashamed which transgress without cause. Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. Lead me in thy truth and teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. Remember, O Lord, thy tender mercies and thy loving kindnesses, for, for they have been ever of old. Remember not the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions. According to thy mercy, remember thou me for thy goodness sake, O Lord. And so he, he starts to and begins here by sectioning out and calling out to God, recognizing that he is the answer to every need that we have. Any need, any circumstance that we have. He, he, notice, he notices how... Uh, some will trust in God, some will not trust in God. He says those who trust, those who obey, those who follow, uh, they, sh they should be honored, they should be uplifted. Uh, and and he, he asked for the Lord to not let anybody see something in him that, that turns away uh, from that. He prays, uh, he prays for God to give him guidance, but he also noticed in verse 4, and it's amazing how many different times in the psalm we see this same kind of thing. Uh, show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. Help me to, to understand. Not only do I want to learn your word, I want to understand your word. You know, there is uh, there is a, a lot. We don't, I don't think we have maybe as much emphasis now as we used to years ago of memorizing scripture and uh, memorizing passages. Some of us, I, I, I was asked one time by somebody, uh, or heard heard the statement made, uh, you know, how much Bible would you have if your Bible was taken away from you? In other words, if, if all the Bible you had is what you have committed to memory. Now, most of us probably have more of it than we realize that we do. We just don't we don't know it in that kind of way. In other words, there's uh, there's numbers of passages of Scripture that I know and I could I could almost quote to you, but I might not be able to tell you every time exactly where it's found. Uh, I might not know the text. If you ask me what's the uh, such and such a verse or such and such chapter, uh, I'd probably give you a blank look a whole lot of times. But it, but if I saw it, then I would say yes, I, I I know that I recognize it. And and he but he says here, show me thy ways, O Lord, and teach me thy paths. In other words, let me not only uh, learn the lesson of your word, but let me learn the purpose of your word, so that when I live my life, I live according to the things. That I have learned. Now, when he, he said he starts this by saying, "You know, the Lord is our answer." Well, why do we? Why do we believe that? Why can we do that? Because we can trust Him. We can trust Him. Uh, 
One of my life verses, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. The, the, the idea that he will show you the way. Well, notice what he says here in verse 8. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, will he teach sinners in the way. Why is it we can trust God? Because God, God is trustworthy. God is good. He is right. There, and one of the things I think that, that bothers me the most about what's happening in our culture today is people that have lost the sense of, of, of a deep trust in the things of God and they want to put the things of the world on an equal footing with it. And, and rather than saying, because if, if God's word says this, it's true. And, and I, don't, I don't question it. I don't challenge it. And if somebody over here says, well, I don't believe that, that's their problem. But it doesn't change the fact that it's true. Uh, and, and, and it really, I mean, it's, it's just amazing to me some of the things that right in our own country right now, you know, are being questioned um, as in terms of, of what is true and what does something mean. And, and, you know, we're redefining terms, we're redefining words, we're, we're redefining what something is, and nothing means anything except what I decide that it means. And what that is, is clearly when you get to the depth of it, it is rebellion against God. Because God has established the truth of something, and I say, well, I don't like that, so therefore I will rebel against it. But he says, good and upright is the Lord, not only are the things that he tells us true, but they are good. They, they are the thing that's good for you. Uh, I, I remember more than one time growing up, uh, my parents telling me that, that something was good for me. I didn't necessarily think it was good to me, but it was good for me. And, and it turned out a little later that I figured out that, that they were right about it. That, you know, and, and so it says here, therefore will he teach sinners in the way. The meek will he guide in judgment and the meek will he teach his way. Now, meekness is a word that sometimes we confuse with weakness. But there's a great deal of difference between weakness and meekness because meekness is a chosen position. Weakness is a forced position. In other words, if I am, if I am weak, there's nothing I can do about it. But if I'm strong and I choose to be meek, that's a decision that I've made. And, and meekness is actually controlled strength. It's when I'm in a position where I could do something different, but I willingly choose. And so uh, they, if, and, and, uh, there's a, 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 this same word that's translated meek is also in other places translated to describe a horse when a bit is put in its mouth and you control him. And you can have a horse that's an old hag that's weak, and that horse you can control, but he's no, he's no good, except he's headed to the glue factory probably. But, so he's <laughs> worthless. But a strong horse has, has the strength, and yet when he's controlled, he now that, that controlled strength, he becomes powerful and he becomes useful. Well, in the case of the horse, you force him by the bit, but really you break a horse over a period of time, and once you do that, it takes very little to direct the movements of a horse. Somebody that knows what they're doing can, can, uh, can, can move a horse uh, just with a, with a very touch of, of their leg or their foot almost and, and, or even speak to them. But the, the strength is there, but it's under control. Well, for us, when he says the meek will he guide, that is when I have made a choice that I took my, my strength that I have. God grants to us as human beings, he grants to us the strength of choice. Do you realize how powerful that is? The, the fact that you can choose to be what you're going to be. And if you make a bad choice, you're going to get bad results most of the time for it, but you still have the right to make that choice. And, and God in your life will not overrule the will of the choice that you make. He also will not undo the consequences of the choice that you make. I heard somebody say one time that, uh, people go out all week and, and uh, sow wild oats and then go to church on Sunday and pray for crop failure, and it doesn't work that way. You're going to get the results of what you do, but the meekness, when, when I choose that, I, 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 I cause myself to come under instruction, and there's all kinds of ways. Any of you that, that ever 
uh, ever were in the military. I was not, but some of you were, and you were in the military. You know that one of the first things they establish for you is uh, the rank uh, of, of authority. And one way or the other, either by choice or by force, you learn pretty quickly that, to fall in line with that. But And, and the, the military completely depends upon that because when it comes time, uh, if, if you're caught in, in battle, somebody's got to make a choice. And when they make that choice and give that order, everybody has to obey it. You don't stop and vote to decide what you're going to do. And, and, and that is, there's a strength that's there. Well, that is, that is really a, a picture of meekness. And some, like I say, sometimes it's forced. But it, but it winds up being what it is, and that the usefulness of the person, their strength comes through in that. So he says, the meek will he guide in judgment, and the meek will he teach his way. So he will help us to learn, and we can become more than we ever could otherwise when we subject ourselves to him. I set aside my will, and I desire his will. Verse 10, all the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth, unto such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. For thy name's sake, O Lord, pardon mine iniquity, for it is great. So now David comes and he says, I realize, I recognize there's sinfulness in my life. And I desire, uh, I desire uh, forgiveness and pardon for that. But then notice in verse 12, and I've got verse 12, 13, and 14 underlined in my Bible. What man is he that feareth the Lord him shall he teach in the way that he shall choose. His soul shall dwell at ease, for his seed shall inherit the earth. How is it that you can live your life not worried? How, how do you live your life without worry? It is because you have chosen to dwell in the shadow of the Holy Spirit. His soul shall dwell at ease and his seed shall inherit the earth. It will make a difference in your life, not only for now, but for the future. Because the person that, verse 12, fears the Lord, and that word fear that's used all kinds of times through the Bible, it's not the fear like I'm afraid of a snake. It's the fear like the respect that you have. Uh, he's far more powerful than a snake, but he's not interested in harming me. He's not interested in helping me. And the fear of the Lord, uh, the respect, the honor, uh, the, the, the willingness, again, to submit myself to him. And then verse 14, the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. Do you want to know the secret things of God? Do you want to know the secret things of God? You know, people all, all the time want to, to know secrets and want to know things about people and get all, I mean, you know, gossiping and all that kind of stuff, trying to find out everything you can about everybody else's business and all. And, and that, that's uh, probably not most time really good. But he says here, the secret of the Lord, the thing, that, the thing that God has, the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him or that trust him or that reverence him, and he will show them his covenant. That word covenant is a word of promise, a, a, a covenant, a promise that he has made. The thing that he's promised for us, he will deliver. Now then pick up. And so we see that, uh, that the help that we need comes from the Lord and the Lord can be trusted in all things. And then you go into this last section and he goes down uh, beginning in verse 15. Mine eyes are ever toward the Lord for he shall pluck my feet out of the net. So he comes down here in these verses, he's going to mention in each verse something that he delivers us from. The first thing here is danger. Pluck my feet out of the net. The picture of the net is that which is about to trap, that which is about to catch. Do you realize how many times in your life and in my life you were that close to something that God saved you from? You know, we, we sometimes we don't realize when we, we even complain because the events of life send us away we didn't want to go, and we don't realize the way we, that we were about to go was a way that could have created great harm. He, his, he, he, will, he will pluck my feet out of the net. Look, verse 16, Turn thee unto me and have mercy upon me, for I am desolate and afflicted. And so the first thing he relieves us from, from danger, and then here uh, he relieves us or rescues us from loneliness. David was a, was a person who had great power, great strength, 
great honor, uh, great wealth, and yet also we find that on a number of occasions he was a very lonely person. There, he, he, he had, there was something inside him that caused him to withdraw to himself, even to the point of depression at times. And he says here, I'm desolate, I'm, affect, I'm afflicted. Sometimes when you just feel like the whole world's against you, guess who's not against you? The Lord God is not against you. He's on your side. Verse 17, the troubles of my heart are enlarged. Oh, bring thou me out of distress. And here he talks about, a broken heart. Uh, my, my, the troubles of my heart are enlarged. Uh, I, I was talking to somebody just today that has had something happen in their life that that has just broken their heart. Uh, they're broken hearted. Uh, I, I've used that term probably more to describe the way I, I feel when I look at our nation and I look at our world and I look at what's happening. It breaks my heart to see what's happening. And And when you do that, it can be something outside of you. It can be something inside of you. It can be somebody that's so close to you that you would have never thought that they would be the person that would let you down, and yet they do. Uh, the person that you would feel you could always count on, and yet something happens. And, and that the, the trouble of my heart are enlarged. And the Bible uses that term heart, of course, not to talk about the, the physical heart, but the center of our being, from down deep inside myself, there's just something there. And when I am troubled beyond any other thing that can happen, God alone is the answer. Look in verse, uh, verse 18 then. Uh, look upon my affliction and my pain and forgive all my sins. Consider my enemies, for they are many. They hate me with cruel hatred. And so he describes uh, physical pain from sickness. He, can, he describes pain from the outside from one that comes uh, to attack uh, and, to, and to, uh, to create uh, physical harm maybe for us. Uh, and then verse 20, Oh, keep my soul and deliver me. Let me not be ashamed, for I put my trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed, for I put my trust in thee. In thee, when I come to the point that that everything falls out, where am I going to come down? Don't don't let me say, man. I wish I, I wish I would have could have should have. Wish I had done this. Wish I had done that. Instead, let me not be ashamed, because I put my trust in thee. Verse twenty one. Let integrity and uprightness preserve me, for I wait on thee. And I'm going to tell you what. That is a powerful verse right there. Let integrity and uprightness preserve me. How many people are there in our world today who have tossed their integrity on a trash heap for a dollar, for a position, for power, for a moment's pleasure, and, and the, the who they are? They, I'm going to tell you what, it is, a, it is a blessing to get up in the morning and look in the mirror at an ugly face and know that everything's all right. To know that, that behind that face, you're not worried about the looks. I mean, you're there trying to fix yourself and look the best you can. But you know that on the other side of that is somebody that you're okay with. Uh, it, it is a, it's an a, a, a awful burden to carry to know that when you look at that person, you're looking at a dishonest person. You're looking at a person who has failed to be what they ought to be, one that's, that's let down somebody that they should have been lifting up, somebody that has in whatever kind of way it is. And we all fail. We all make mistakes. But to be able to feel like that, that there is something inside me, that I stood up for what was right, who I am and what I am and what I be, let integrity and uprightness preserve me. And it will. It will, it will keep you through the trial. To be preserved is to be come out on the other side. It, it, will, it will carry you through the trials of life and the problem, for I wait on thee. I'm not waiting for me to know the answer, and I'm sure not waiting for the world to give me the answer. I'm waiting on thee. Verse 22, redeem Israel, O God, out of all his troubles. David was always coming back. Lord, care for our nation. Provide for our nation. Man, I wish that, I wish that we had uh, some people in Washington that would say, Lord, redeem the United States of America. Lord, lift us back up to where we ought to be. I, I, this, this foolishness that's going on right now uh, it ought to be something that embarrasses in, in anybody. And uh, we're being humiliated before the world, and, and we're allowing ourselves uh, to be a laughingstock to the world. 
but at the same time, we're dragging ourselves uh, through the ditch. Would to God that we would have leaders that would cause us to turn our hearts back toward the Lord. Anything before we close? <clears throat> Even though the subscription only says a plea for deliverance and forgiveness, this fits perfectly into the time that he was dealing with Absalom. Mm -hmm. Because he, you know, he's heartbroken at, at, you know, because of what he had did. And he's definitely uh, in it. Yeah. <laughs> he's being tracked. He's trying down, to kill him. Uh, want to kill him. I mean, just, just everything right down the line. That's just, just what came to my mind as we were. Reading and studying this, and this, this is perfect for what happened with the You know, and, and it, a, a parent can understand what David was going through there because his son had turned against him and was trying to kill him. And yet he sends his soldiers out and says, Don't hurt him. Don't hurt him. Deal, deal gently with him. Uh, and, and when he found out what had happened, his heart was, was broken again. Uh, David, David is a story. Of course, we did a whole series of messages on David last year, but David is a story of a man. Uh, the Bible called him a man after God's own heart, uh, and the very heights that's possible, and yet he allowed himself to be a failure as a father, and and because of that, his his children were not prepared to live life. And I, there's a lesson for that for every. For every parent, and especially for dads, that boy, if we don't if we don't do the job, uh, I can cool guarantee you the world's not going to do it. They're they're not going to do it if if we don't. So. Let's pray. God, we thank you for the time to be together this evening, together around your word. We thank you for the truths of your word, and just verse by verse by verse as we go through, we see how that you spoke through David in his day, and you speak to us in our day, the truths of how we can trust you, how we can follow you, how we can draw closer to you. And we just pray, Lord, that you'll help us to do that. Help us to commit ourselves more fully and more completely and more wholly to trying to be the people that you would have us to be. We ask you to meet needs in our lives. We're mindful of the ones whose names were mentioned as we've already prayed. There are so many. There's sickness, there, there's hurt, there's weakness in all those situations. Lord, we pray if it could be your precious will uh, for strengthening and healing to take place. We pray for those families that have lost a loved one. We pray for comfort and strength in the days that are ahead for them. And then we just pray for each of us that as we go from this place, that you'll place within our hearts, within our spirits, the strength uh, to live for you each day, to trust you and to seek in ways that we can to draw other people towards you. Forgive our sinfulness for our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for coming. <clears throat>